So welcome to a lightning talk about JCypher. We have a subtitle, Issue Closed, Database Design and Mapping. By the end of this talk, you will have a good idea what this subtitle means in connection with JCypher and graph databases. But for now, to get an understanding what JCypher is today and where it aims for the future, I will go back to the start, right to where it all began. It's now a bit more than two years when I first came into contact with Neo4j graph databases and the Cypher language. I was fascinated right from the beginning and I wanted to do something with it. So I decided to write a native Java DSL, a domain specific language for Cypher. This DSL is basically a fluent Java API which allows to concatenate method calls in order to formulate language expressions. And as far as possible, method nesting is avoided. And again, as far as possible, method calls have at most one argument. Why that? Because that makes a DSL which is easy and intuitive to read and write. And most important, you get the best out of completion proposals provided by modern Java IDEs. In the background, this DSL creates Cypher expressions. I wanted to be able to execute these expressions against a graph database in a uniform way, no matter if the database is remote, embedded, or in memory. So I introduced a database abstraction layer. Next there was the question, what Java result should such a query return? The decision was towards a generic graph model consisting of nodes, relations, labels, types, and properties. While simple, the model is easy to read and navigate, and also easy to modify. And you can take a modified model and store it in a straightforward way back into the database by simply calling store on the model. You can even start with an empty model, populate it, and store it to the database. You are never concerned with writing query expressions which do the actual update. That's all done for you in the background. So looking what we have so far, we obviously have access to graph databases at different levels of abstraction. At the lower level with a query DSL and at a somewhat higher level with a generic graph model. So consequently the question arises, are there more levels of abstraction? At least more levels of abstraction that make sense. And the answer is, yes, there are. The next level of abstraction is to take an arbitrarily complex graph of Java objects, POJOs, plain old Java objects, let's call them domain objects, and store it to the graph database for later retrieval. In JCypher, this level of abstraction is called domain mapping. You don't need to modify your objects or their classes in any way. You don't add annotations. And as JCypher provides a default mapping, you don't need to write a single line of mapping code or mapping configuration. At that same level of abstraction, you want to be able to query your graph of domain objects. For that, JCypher provides another Java DSL called Domain Query Language. With Domain Query Language, you can formulate queries based on concepts of your domain model rather than on concepts of the underlying graph model, which is a quite powerful approach as we will see in some examples. In addition, JCypher provides some non-functional features like transactions and concurrency support. Concurrency support for multiple clients accessing one database as well as for multi-threaded access from within one client. But now let's have a look at some examples. Imagine you have a model like that. You have companies and persons which are kinds of subjects. A subject is related via points of contact to points of contacts. A point of contact can be an electronic address or a postal address. And a postal address is situated within an area, for example, within a city. An area can be part of another area. So a city can be part of a state, can be part of a country, can be part of a continent, can be part of planet Earth. A simple but useful model. 
Now let's have a look at some Java code. First, we instantiate some domain objects. We populate the graph. That's done behind this create method. I won't go into detail about that because it's simple and straightforward. The create method returns a list of persons which serve as root objects of the domain object graph. Next, we need access to a graph database. For that, we instantiate a D IDB access object by means of a factory. We specify the database connection to be remote, and we need some properties. Most important, the URL where we have a Neo4j server running. We are working with domain models and domains, so in addition, we do need a domain access, which we again create by means of a factory. And the domain, a business domain, must have a unique name within a database. In our case, the name is people domain. Now with the domain access at hand, we simply call store, given the domain objects, and the entire graph of domain objects is stored into the database. So next we want to formulate and execute a query, a domain query. For that, from the domain access, we create first a query object. Next, we create one or more domain object matches. A domain object match plays a central role in domain queries. It serves to map objects, domain objects of a certain type. In our case, we match objects of type person. Next, we specify some constraints on that domain object match using where clauses. We specify the persons or the person to have a last name of Smith and the first name of John. Consecutive where clauses, like here, are ended by default. If you want to or them, you need to insert an or clause, and you also can use brackets to arbitrarily nest those expressions. What we want to know in this query is now which other persons live at John Smith's addresses. For that, we use a traversal clause. We start traversing from John Smith, forward or forth, via points of contact. Now we are at John Smith addresses. Then we continue backward or back, again via points of contact, to objects of type person. In that way, we have defined another domain object match for persons which live at John Smith's addresses. It's that simple. What is left to do, we need to execute the query. And for every domain object match we have specified in the context of the query, we can retrieve the actual result. In our case, we retrieve a list of persons, those persons which live at John Smith's addresses. And in the entire query, we have only used concepts of our business domain, of our domain model. Another query, we know this part. We specify a domain object match for objects of type person with last name, oops, that was too fast, with last name Smith. What we want to know now, who of those Smiths have addresses in Europe or live in Europe? So next in this query, we need a match for Europe. That's a match for an object of type area with name Europe. In the next step in this query, we collect all areas, if you think of the model, all areas of all Smith's addresses. That's again done with a traversal clause. So we start traversing from Smith, forward wire points of contact. We are at Smith's addresses. We continue forward via area. Now we are at the immediate areas of the addresses, those areas where the addresses are situated in. And then we recursively collect all areas which are reachable via the part of attribute. And we return 
or this leads to another domain object match. Now we have collected all areas of all Smith's addresses and to complete the query, we use a select statement or a select clause. We select from all Smiths those elements where the previously collected areas contain Europe. So that's again quite simple and only using concepts of our business domain. What's left to do? We execute the query and retrieve the actual result, a list of persons with last name Smith who have addresses in Europe. Uh, you can do a lot more interesting and powerful things with domain queries, all described in the project's documentation and in, a, in the distinct samples project. Now with all those domain queries, you are never concerned with optimizing database structures or mappings for query performance. Because the graph of domain objects is backed by a graph database and navigating the graph database is really cheap. In contrast with relational databases, you need to optimize database structures almost on a per query basis, especially when it comes to navigating highly connected data. So now it should be clear to you what the subtitle I've mentioned earlier, issue closed, database design and mapping, really means in connection with JCypher and graph databases. I hope I was able to give you an overview of what JCypher is today and how it evolved over time, but now some future directions. New features are still being added on a re regular basis to JCypher. For example, one of the next releases will see a feature where we will be able to store domain queries together with a domain model for later reuse. So you will be able to reuse a domain query even if you don't have access to the Java code which originally created it. And I've added recently a new project, JCypher Server, a server-side implementation of JCypher which provides a RESTful API and which also provides a web UI which allows you to work and experiment with domain models and domain queries. This project is in a really early state. It's far from being useful right now and far from being feature complete, but it will grow in functionality over the next few months. So please watch out for that. Now with that, I finally reached the end of my lightning talk about JCypher and uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thanks. <laughs> so if you have questions you can ask them now or I'll be upstairs later then for additional questions. Okay, thank you very much. Bye.